That was a major third. All right, so today we're gonna be going over what intervals are. So intervals may seem like this crazy thing or like this like super intellectual, like I have to go to music school so I can learn intervals thing. But actually intervals are really kind of simple. Really all it is is the distance between two notes. So for example, sometimes we have a half step or we have a whole step. If for some reason you weren't taught that, essentially all it is is a half step is one note away. So for example, from C to C sharp. So we have C here going to C sharp here. That's a half step. C to C sharp is a half step. So it's basically just one fret away from where you currently are on the neck. Then we also have whole steps, which is two frets away. So here I have C to D. So we're going from the third fret to the fifth fret. So basically we're putting a note in between. Now that is a fairly simple concept of the half step and whole steps. Now all an interval is, is just basically distances that are longer than half steps and whole steps. For example, if we look at the distance between C and G and we count in the musical alphabet, we have C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, and then G. So that's eight notes away. That's a total of three whole steps and a half step. Now that's a very large distance and it's a lot of counting. That's a lot of fingers that we need in order to get there. And what if we do something like C to B, for example? One thing you can do is use intervals instead of this. So basically the intervals are used to measure distances in farther lengths than just your traditional like half step whole step. I also forgot to mention that there's actually a PDF in the description with a little chart that shows you all the intervals. It looks like this. And basically there's three types of intervals. There's the major intervals, there's the minor intervals, and there's the perfect intervals. Now I'm not gonna really go into why they're called this way too much, but basically these are the three options that we have for intervals. And these all relates to the major scale. So let's take the C major scale, which is the easiest scale ever, because it's just C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So in the C major scale, we have seven distinct notes. We have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C again, which is number eight, but really we have seven distinct total. So there's actually seven distinct intervals ranking from one to seven, and then you have the major, minor, and the perfect qualities. So let's start off with C to D. Now D is the second note in the scale, and C is the first note, so we have what's called a second. In this case, it's a major second. If we count the whole steps and half steps in between C and D, we actually just have one whole step or two half steps. That's a fairly easy one. That's a major second interval. Then if we want to go from C to E, we have C, D, E, we have a major third. Now that's two whole steps away. We have C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. Then we go on from C to F, and that's what's called a perfect fourth. And I'll explain to you why it's perfect in a second. But a perfect fourth is two whole steps and a half step away. Then from C to G, we have a perfect fifth, C, D, E, F, G. If you're a guitar player, power chord. If you're a pianist, this is what's going on in your left hand most of the time. If you play any other instrument, I don't know exactly how to help you. But it's basically that. Now, both of these are perfect, the perfect fourth and perfect fifth. One reason why they're called the perfect intervals is because when you invert a perfect interval, they invert right into each other. So for example, let's take C to F. This is a perfect fourth. This perfect fourth is two whole steps and a half step away. So now what I'm gonna do is invert it. So I'm gonna take this F and I'm gonna drop it down an octave and we're gonna look at F to C. So when you invert it, basically you take the highest note and bring it down or take the lowest note and bring it up. So if we look at the distance between F to C, we have F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, B sharp or B flat, B, and then C. So we have a total of one, two, three whole steps and one half step. So if we look at what interval is three whole steps and a half step, we actually have a perfect fifth and vice versa. So if I bring it back, we now have a perfect fourth. So then let's go on. Now we have C to A, which is a major six. Now for this, if we were to count whole steps and half steps, we'd have four whole steps and a half step. That's a lot of counting. So what I prefer to do is actually go down and count backwards. So we look at C to A, we go C, B, B flat, A. That's actually only a whole step and a half step away, but just bump it up the octave. So we have this major six here. Then we have a major seventh. 
this is C to B. Now, basically, this is the furthest interval that we have because C to B, if you look at them on the musical staff, they're right next to each other. They're adjacent notes. C to B is actually a half step down, and then we bump it up. Or if we count all the intervals, we have one whole step, two whole steps, half step, so two whole steps and a half step, three whole steps and a half step, four whole steps and a half step, five whole steps and a half step. And let's include that half step at the end that I forgot to include. So now we have five whole steps and two half steps, which equals six whole steps. That's a lot of counting. I prefer to count a step down, then bump it up an octave. By the way, an octave is simply when you bring something up 12 notes because we only have 12 notes in the music off of it. So for example, if we look at the piano, C here and C here are the same exact note. They're both C notes and they're an octave apart from each other. So those are the major intervals. We have C to C, which is perfect unison. You can throw that away. C to D, which is a major second. C to E, which is a major third. C to F, which is a perfect fourth. C to G, which is a perfect fifth. Then C to A, which is a major 6, C to B, which is a major 7. So we have 7 major intervals here. Then we have some in between, we have the minor intervals. Now to get the minor intervals, all you have to do is take the major intervals and lower them by half step. So for example, if C to D is a major 2nd, and that's a whole step away, if we want a minor 2nd, we just have to lower D to D flat. Now C to D flat is actually just a half step away. So we have this kind of thing we have a minor second interval. So then if we remember correctly, a major third from C is C to E. So if we want a minor third, we just have to lower E to E flat. And if we count our distance, C, C sharp, D, E flat. So we have C to E flat, that's a whole and a half step away from where we are. That's a minor third. So then for the perfect fourth, it's the perfect interval, so it doesn't quite work that you just flatten it. And if you do flatten the perfect fourth, if you flatten F, you get an F flat technically, which is an enharmonic equivalent to E natural. Basically, it's too nice to name the same note. A lot of music teachers will tell you that F flat doesn't exist because if you look on the piano, there is actually no black key in between F and E. There's nothing here. If we just bring F down to E, we have E, not F flat. But F flat is actually kind of useful sometimes. There's been a few moments in my life where I'm like, dang, this is actually a little easier. In the song Rest on Rest off my debut album, I actually used a C flat, I believe, in one line. And it made me very sad. Uh, I, could, I probably could have written it all in sharps, but I prefer reading in flats. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that's the thing. But anyway, if you look at C to F flat, that technically is a diminished fourth. But honestly, I've never really needed to identify that interval. I've never had to be like, oh, this is a diminished fourth away. Usually just major third works. But we can raise the fourth and we can get what's called an augmented fourth from C to F sharp. And if we count from C to F sharp, we have C to D, which is a whole step, C to E, which is a whole step, so we're at two whole steps. And then E to F sharp is another whole step, so we have three whole steps. This is also what's known as the tritone, because we have three tones, or three whole steps. And whenever you augment an interval, you're making it bigger. So when you have an augmented chord, it's kind of like a major chord, but bigger in terms of interval. So I added an extra half step there to expand that chord. This can also be interpreted as C to G flat, which would be our diminished fifth. Not minor fifth because the fifth is perfect, but a diminished fifth is what goes in diminished triads or diminished chords, also just three whole steps. Then finally, we have C to A flat, and our C to A flat is a minor sixth, but if we reinterpret it as C to G sharp, we have an augmented fifth, which is what goes in augmented chords. Now, this is also the sixth again, so I'm gonna count backwards. This is actually two whole steps down. So C to B flat or A sharp, and then A flat or G sharp. And then we bump that out the octave. Then finally, if we take our C to B and flatten the B to a B flat, now we have a minor seventh interval. So the minor seventh is just a whole step down from C to B flat. And with that, we conclude our intervals. So if you ever seen something like minor, nine, 11, 13, or whatever, all of that is just referring to what intervals are in it. When you see something like a nine, basically a nine is what happens when you 
bump the second up an octave. For example, if we have C, D, so this is the, our two, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. That's nine notes away. That's a ninth. So basically when you see a nine, it just means a second, but up the octave. So when you see a C minor nine chord, you essentially have a C minor triad. You have the minor seventh and then you have the nine. You also add a seventh because we build chords in tertiary harmony, but I'm not going to go over that today. But anyway, those are intervals. If you want to know how to take these intervals and make chords, I actually have a video on how to find the chords in a major scale. And I basically just go over how these intervals fit within chord spelling and how to find chords using these intervals and what intervals are in these chords and so on. But anyway, that's about all I have for you on intervals. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, like, subscribe. If you didn't, dislike, comment, whatever. Anyway, take care.